guys, Rory and Daryl here from Race Coaching. Um, we just wanted to pull together a video whilst everyone's kind of stuck in lockdown for week number three. Um, so yeah, today we wanted to kind of take a look um, at our top five shoes um, and just talk a little bit about them. Now, just one thing to point out is uh, I have no idea what shoes Daryl's picked. And I have no idea what shoes Rory's picked. So this could be quite an exciting one. Obviously, Daryl was a little bit older than me, even though you probably can't tell. Um, so there might be some shoes that you kind of go, I have never seen these before. Were they not meant to be in a museum? But I'm sure he'll talk you through them. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So um, after you, by all means, ladies first, uh, give us your first shoe. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to this. This is a shoe from a brand that they've been doing other footwear for years. Uh, they sort of hit the running market about a decade ago, I guess it would have been, and produced a really nice range of, of models. Well, I really like them, and one in particular that I'm going to show you is the K-Swiss Quickie Blade Light. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so this is a uh, a very lightweight training shoe, ideal for... Can I just I didn't even know they did running shoes. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, this was a super good. So really lightweight, um, very, very flexible. And the thing with the, the, the focus on the shoe was uh, the outsole being um, a kind of a midsole outsole in one. I don't know if you can see that from the camera. All the shoes were blade something or another. So this is the quickie blade light, as I said, and the blades. Did you say the quickie uh, blade? With blades on the outside. Okay, <laughs> so they compress and become responsive when you kind of toe off. Um, so whether you're a forefoot striker or a rear foot striker, at some point you're going to come into contact with them. They flex in and then kind of react in a way to, to kind of propel you forward a bit more. Quite a low drop on the shoe. Again, I don't know if you can kind of see from the camera. And they did um, a couple of different colours. And one thing that was actually quite unique about the shoes was the fact that they had a hydrophobic upper. So it wasn't waterproof but it was water repellent because um, obviously water can kind of come in this side. But if it was drizzling or you were running across kind of dewy ground first thing in the morning, the, 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 the coating that they'd created on the upper meant that no water could kind of come through and make your socks get wet early on. But um, yeah, I did a lot of um, quicker stuff in this. You know, I'd, I'd go out for maybe no more than sort of half an hour, 45 minutes, just as a steady run, but would then run... Um, you know, a 5k race or a 10k race in something like that because yeah. I felt the kind of the cushioning level was perfect for that. I quite, so, I quite like it. I, yeah, I'm it's good shoe. I like the colour. Um, as I said, yeah, they did a couple of different colourways and they had a period of time where they sort of sponsored Iron Man. So you had kind of the Iron Man logo yeah. on some of them as well. But yeah, light, flexible, responsive. Um, I've managed to hold on to them. They do look a little bit battered, but you'd expect that if you'd use the shoe. But no, I um, this was um, my... This is the earliest of the, the, the five shoes that I've um, okay, few. brought out. So don't worry, guys. You might start recognising some shoes later on then. Yeah, is, is what so, but unfortunately, <laughs> you, might, if you might do some searching online and you might be able to maybe get the odd pair or two if any retailer's still got any of these knocking about. But unfortunately, they don't make this shoe anymore. But yeah, good shoe. And um, yeah, number one in my, wow. my, uh, my list. Wow. Cool. That was a, a blast from the past. That, but I do like it. I like. Okay, so I'm going for mine. So as you can imagine, mine aren't quite as old as that. I think probably the transition of moving house a million times during uni uh, a while ago probably stopped me having two older shoes. But I just start with uh, again, not in age order mine, but um, kind of just sort of an order from I guess top five to so number five to number one. So the first one I'm going to go with is is a very popular brand. Will be more popular than their the ones Daryl's just pulled out. But we've got the Adidas Adios 3s. So this, as you can see, is not the kind of traditional colorway. Uh, this actually looks like I've just picked it up from a French market. Uh, this was actually a shoe that was, um, it was to do with um, a Go Active charity campaign that they ran. Um, I actually, originally, I'll be honest, I did have a different color of these, but the stitching came off uh, and they replaced them for me with these ones. Um, bought these a couple of years ago, actually, you can see, nice fresh mud, clearly uh, worn them quite recently. And for me, this is a shoe that actually, is phenomenal at short distance races. So it's not a shoe I would personally wear for marathons. I know a lot of people do. Um, a lot of friends of mine do wear these for longer distances. Um, but I just don't think they, for me, got enough support for a longer uh, run. But actually, things like park runs, 5Ks, 10Ks, uh, up to 10 milers, 
this shoe gets you moving. Um, I think because it's so lightweight and it's kind of shoe when you put it on, you don't really feel like you're you're really wearing anything. So you you kind of put it on and you really can feel like you just want to run out the door and go for it. Um, so yeah, you know, really, really decent shoe, uh, decent traction. I think what you'd expect from the likes of Adidas. Uh, I mean, the Adios has been around for years and years and years, and they've done many an iteration of it um, over the last kind of God knows how many years. Um, but yeah, for me, this was a shoe I broke my 5K PB in. Um, I also ran my uh, previous 10K PB in 2018 in. Um, I took a considerable chunk off my time. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of number five for me. I should probably uh, give it a little pressure wash at some point and clean it because I do like to keep my shoes in good nick, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, the Adidas Adios 3 is is uh, number five for me, just from the fond memories of some very fast running in them. So yeah, over to you. So number four in the countdown. Um, and there's a bit of a theme going on here so far with kind of lighter shoes. Um, so I've selected the Mizuno Hitagami um, I might have to just remind myself which model. This was version two. So um, nice and bright, wow. as you can see. Uh, same kind of category that this falls into. So I do know some people that would have run mileage in this shoe because they just prefer a lightweight shoe. Again, for me, this was tempo, great tempo shoe. Um, you know, if you're going to if you're going to a park run and there's a, it's not a grass route. There's there's paths. There's um, compact tracks for example this is a perfect shoe for that um so yeah it's bottom line, it doesn't look like it's it's not supportive it's um as i said very yeah particularly lightweight um wave plate through the the, the rear foot of the midsole um yeah just simple as that it was the kind of just prior to when shoes started to to change the uppers and go for kind of non-stitching so mm. there's, there's still stitched components on there the mizuno logo the toe box itself That's um, smart. That's but, nice. uh, yeah it was a nice shoe um as i said i did a lot of um again shorter stuff in it because you actually felt like you get up on your toes and run quite quick so um yeah great shoe um, still got some wear in it, possibly. Um, again, I've not really, because I've not done mileage like you would do in a traditional shoe, I don't kind of know really how many miles I've run in it, but um, it sits away in the garage and every now and again it might take a little outing if I, uh, I feel I want to. But um, videos yeah, like this. Another, wow. another shoe to, um, yeah, look up, um, see if you can still get some if, if possible. But yeah, good, good, good shoe. I loved it. Loved using it. Nice, I like the colourway on that, it's nice. Yeah. Right, so for me, now this is quite a recent shoe actually. Um, I just want to bring this in the mix because uh, for me it's very rare that I'll kind of change brands without lots and lots and lots and lots of research normally. I, you know, I read up about a lot of shoes and stuff, but um, effectively what I wanted recently was a shoe that would kind of do me well um, over trails. Now I've got a few pairs of trail shoes, but um, some are kind of more race orientated for cross countries and stuff and you know, not ones you want to put a lot of mileage in. Uh, and you know, I was really trying to find a shoe that I could do a lot of mileage in on trails because I've been sticking to those more recently. A to explore and B to kind of keep off the harder ground um, and just keep my body in good nick. But the shoe that I managed to find um, was the Brooks Cascadia version 14. So this is actually quite a new shoe, still sold today in many shops. Um, again, clearly got the trails on them from the weekend, so I need to probably again have a proper pressure wash uh, session. So yeah, this is a shoe I probably um, got about a month ago, I would think. Um, actually, probably one of the most comfortable trail shoes I've ever worn. So in terms of a shoe, it's got kind of the sock lined fit inside, um, very good support. And actually it's, uh, it's on paper a pretty heavy shoe, but it's when you're wearing it, it doesn't feel that heavy. So. Uh, to give you an idea as well, so I bought these uh, on Thursday, wore them for a couple of days on the, uh, sorry, a couple of miles on the Friday, and then ran a whole marathon on them on the Saturday. Didn't break them in at all. They were absolutely perfect. My feet were unscathed. Um, yeah, very, very comfortable shoe. Good amount of grip, you know, not, not, not the best. You know, it's not going to be like a Solomon or a, um, you know, a Hocker but actually just for adequate kind of, you know, um, muddy courses will be absolutely fine. Nice design as well, nice color, you know, nothing too crazy, but got a bit of kind of Larry orange in there just to give you a bit of jazz. 
but yeah, very comfortable shoe. Been incredibly pleased with it. Run 150 miles in it already, and uh, yeah, been very, very impressed. So yeah, Brooks Cascadia 14, guys. So uh, my number four. So number uh, three on my countdown is a shoe that uh, our our good friend Matt Clark was uh, kind enough to uh, to help me out with a few years ago. Um, he's also a co-sponsor of our, our uh, lockdown league 5k which is a uh, <laughs> shoe off this week um, but yeah the shoe that uh, uh, I'm, I'm going for next I hope it's is, a hocker <laughs> it is staying with the Brooks theme it is the launch Brooks launch oh. 4 and this was a limited edition colorway oh so it's Ooh. the UK flag, the GB flag version, and this was from um, okay. 2017. So this basically was a shoe that they launched and sold at the London Marathon Expo in 2017. Hopefully, if I bring the close to the camera, you might be able to see yeah, the, yeah. the London 17, 2017 on the side. Um, one and I did a lot of mileage in this shoe. Um, so this was I can see uh, and on it the is basically yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's a shoe for longer training runs. Um, I know the next step up above this shoe is the Ghost, which I've had many pairs of and loved to bits. Um, but the thing I liked about this shoe is, is this is kind of really your kind of old school Pegasus rival in a way. Mm. Um, there's not too many thrills about the shoe. You know, Brooks used their DNA cushioning in it still. Um, it was almost completely... Um, non-stitched up uh, apart from the toe box um, but again the same thing Rory's just been referring to um, in this case it was just to you know put the shoe on and run there was no kind of breaking in time um, and I would say really after kind of 2017 was when we started to see shoes change their uppers so you could just put shoes on and run but yeah I love this shoe um, as I said did a lot of mileage in it and actually doesn't look as though it's particularly battered in a way but um, so. yeah, you kind of know after a while that you know the mid the midsole was just not giving me um the cushioning that it, it previously did but yeah great shoe and then since that i've had a, another couple of pairs of launches that i've just done you know bulk standard mileage and just gone out and run and you know there's no um you know you wouldn't i wouldn't race in this shoe because uh it's certainly not as light as the previous two shoes i've told told you about but no great shoe loved it um and would continue to use something similar to this to this day Nice. So that's number nice. three. Okay, so number three for me. So this shoe um, is probably one of the only trainers I've had a, a couple of pairs of, actually. Uh, and yeah, I wore this particular model for, uh, I would say, 18 months solidly. Um, did quite a lot of races in it, um, a lot of park runs. Again, sticking with the theme of kind of the faster stuff. Um, yeah, so this is a brand that I um, haven't worn as much recently, but certainly for about 18 months, two years, wore a, a good few models. But this is the New Balance 1400 version 5. So this is predominantly a racing shoe. Uh, you can see inside, even, well, sort of, uh, it's kind of worn off, but it basically just says uh, racing and then something like Silent Hunter or something, some crazy kind of, uh, spiel to suggest it's a very quick shoe which it is so actually uh, this was the first shoe I broke 18 minutes in for 5k uh, so it has a lot of memories for me um, ran a lot of half marathons 10 milers uh, this was kind of the shoe I wore before I started delving into the the world of uh, Nike and Vaporflies and stuff like that so um, yeah I had a couple of pairs of these uh, these have probably done a good seven eight hundred miles but actually to be honest they're not too knackered um, kept these in pretty good nick um, my other pair, however, are done about the same and they all started coming apart here. Um, but again, the good thing with New Balance, that anyone who wears them, they're typically very, very comfortable shoes. Even for the kind of racing shoes, you still feel like you are getting some support and their um, kind of rev light cushioning on the bottom is personally, I think, rev revolution revolutionary, see what I did there. Um, but yeah, no, very, very good shoe, good traction. Uh, quite similar to kind of an Adios in terms of uh, how they feel when you put them on just slightly heavier and you feel a bit more cushioning so you could get away with some training in these but yeah I had some brilliant brilliant races in these and uh, yeah very fond of them so that's my number three the uh, new balance 1400 version five 
Oh, number two now, so, Daryl. No, here we go. We're moving on to number two. So we kind of how I've set this out is is we're going kind of uh, you know the, the the kind of the tens um, and moving right the way up to almost like the modern day. So yeah, yeah, we've uh, you know some of the certainly the first shoe is a good uh, ten or twelve years old. Um, but yeah, moving to my option two or my you know my number two in my range. Um, I'm Can I take a guess? Shoe. Yeah, have a no. guess. If it's chronological and we've done 2017, uh, I'm thinking it's either going to be one of your car who's because we, we've got to be 2018, 19 training phase, racing phase. So, and I think I know what your number one is, but I won't spoil that. And so yeah, I'm, so I'm we're going go with your, your car who. Yeah, you're, uh, you're dead right. So it's yes. the, the version, uh, it's the 2020 edition. So this is the Oconi Ortix. Mm -hmm. um, so I had the first version that that came out in 2019 uh, and actually one thing about the shoe you can see it's done a bit of training already been putting some miles into the shoe um, i just said that doesn't um, look too bad considering i just want to point out daryl and i got taken before lockdown uh, before lockdown yeah on a very very muddy trail run so thanks paul for that i uh, really appreciate yeah. it they don't look too bad because i watched no. mine and and yeah considering what they kind of like, gave them a bit of a home. brush off and um yeah continue to train in them and, and um yeah, kind of did I'm my, my run they look like a shoe but, again but carry yes. on <laughs> um but yeah so i had 2019's version which the upper was it was still virtually the same kind of colorway they had a slightly different look to the upper this is now completely one piece um so everything is kind of heat bonded onto the shoe um it uses what they call like a fulcrum sole so in some respects really to simplify it it's kind of a kind of a cross between a hocker and a brook shoot in terms of how it will actually feel it's kind of got that rocking system within it to again to just when impacting you kind of just propelling forward slightly reducing impact but one thing about it is is it's it, it's a training shoe but it's a lot lighter than what you'd expect a training shoe to, to really be um so certainly my old version um when we were doing some of our our marathon work certainly last year for manchester going out and doing some of those slightly quicker longer training runs didn't feel as though it held me back in the slightest whatsoever um but the key thing to point out on these was is i was just so impressed with the durability um it holds your foot really well um it's kind of got like a there's a stability unit either side, but it just means that just tunes everything up so that your actual balance is good. Um, but no, in terms of its durability, it was amazing. So in 2019, I started using um, the first model that I got in, in January, and I kind of retired them in October um, after, I reckon, a good a good 800 miles. Um, so it, it kind of shows you yeah, the, the shoe might not necessarily be as well known to people, um, might not mean sort of running sh shops are actually selling it at, at this current time. I know certain ones are taking it on, but if you do get a chance to try and give them a whirl, because as I said, and, and the, the outsole wore particularly well, and even my old ones don't look much different to what the kind of the, the tread is on with these now. Um, but yeah, just a great, almost like a no frills kind of um, shoe really it, you put it on um, like a racehorse in a way I refer to it as it just does the job you know stays all day runs you it. go out and put mileage in this and just yeah it will just live up to it so um, yeah again so yeah great shoe and this was my this is my number two nice and I, I can vouch for that having a pair myself it is a really good it was very close to going on my top five I have to admit but I thought because it was still quite new I didn't put it in there but yeah really cool shoe and also for those people out there who love casual trainers these guys make some really awesome casual trainers uh, a bit like new balance as well they, they have some really trendy kind of fashion shoes so take a look check them out finish uh, sportswear brand or sports bear brand as they kind of uh, published and daryl's uh, clearly sporting a t-shirt as well today look at that see proper, proper brand this a, yeah, so, a a fan, fan. so uh, my number two shoe so i'm gonna i follow on the same theme uh, as as the previous shoe uh, sticking with the New Balance theme. So, on that, Daryl, any ideas what this shoe might be? Um, something that you're using at this, maybe something you're using at the moment. No, I haven't done. worn it for. I haven't worn it for a while. Uh, it's certainly a shoe I've talked about. 
you're not going to pick out a um oh, damn you. I want to say an on maybe no 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 it's it no it's it is it is still new balance so I'll put you out of your misery. I'll put you out of your misery. misery. Yeah, go for it. So this is the new uh, balance Zanti V4. So this shoe has done a lot of mileage. Um, I have very little tread left on this shoe, as you can probably see up here. Um, reason why I picked this is, uh, so again, this is pretty much a lightweight racer. It's very similar to the 1400, um, but kind of, I guess, marketed as more of an everyday shoe. Um, but similarly still gives you the ability to do some slower miles, do some quick stuff, um, and a bit of an all-rounder without being too over the top cushioning, so it's still quite a lightweight shoe. Um, again, very comfortable. The reason why I picked this is, um, so I wore this for um, not one, not two, but three ultra marathons last year within the space of two months. Um, I was massively panicking. I had in Dual 24 solo last June, um, didn't know what shoe to wear because I think yeah, for a lot of people that's the most critical thing to get right. Um, and this was a shoe I'd been training in a lot and loved it. I did all my kind of weekly mileage in it. Um, very comfortable, never had any problems with it. Um, so I just decided to uh, use this and I'm so glad I did. Um, I tell you now, this is a shoe, to have a shoe that you can wear solidly for almost 24 hours and your feet be completely unscathed after I don't know many shoes that could do that. So um, either I was incredibly lucky or this is um, a brilliant shoe. And again, I wore this for two more ultras, uh, so Race of the Stones and a Salisbury uh, 50K as well. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of memories for this shoe. Um, absolutely love it. This is the kind of shoe that I wish I had bought uh, two or three pairs of. Unfortunately, they're very hard to get hold of now. New Balance tend to... Um, <clears throat> tend to kind of uh, hide their shoes once they bring out new models. So this has now been replaced by the Zanti Pursuit. It's probably the closest model. I haven't tried that myself. Um, I did try another one of their models, the Zanti Solus, which had the kind of um, almost like the socked lining at the top, but it just didn't fit very well and felt too tight on the, on the front. Um, so I may get another pair of these. I've seen a few pairs kicking about in kind of, uh, you know, God knows where in Europe, but they're, they're quite pricey as a, as a result. But, yeah, brilliant shoe, very, very durable. Um, this has done probably nearly a thousand miles and yeah, it's warm, but considering what I've done in them, it's um, yeah, in good nick. So yeah, the Zanti uh, version four by New Balance is my number two. Yeah. So I know what your number one's one. gonna be. Yeah, yeah. So in my case, I'm just gonna have to lean across here because I had them lined up in order. Um, so yeah, so kind of my <coughs> theme's been, as you see, so a couple of lightweight shoes couple of training shoes and then more really um, um, kind of a longer racing shoe now. Um, so this is a current shoe. Oh, which one is it going to be? Right up to date. Yeah, current shoe right up to date. Um, and I'll give one you a little two. bit one of a, two. Um, Yeah, it's going to be one or two. <laughs> but um, I'll give you a, a little... Um, uh, a, you, those that watched our video on some of our recent reviews that we did reviewing too. I talked about this shoe in particular several weeks back um, and I've started using them myself. So my version, my number one um, in this range is the Hocker Carbon X. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I won't kind of go and bore you too much because if you've um, you've watched my review on this shoe that we did um, recently, I kind of go into a, a bit of detail about the shoe. But as you know, it rivals um, the Vapor Flies and the Next Percents, um, and there's other carbon plated shoes coming out now. But um, having not done, certainly I'd bought this shoe to potentially race London in before it got um, postponed. Um, whether or not I'll still I'll still use that um, in on October is uh, remains to be seen. But no, love the shoe, love the way that it fits. As I said before, the completely knitted upper um, is particularly lightweight. It's not as light as the uh, next percent shoe is, all to do with the foam, and it's not quite as soft. However, I find it works particularly well. The whole rocking system and the carbon plate. See, everybody knows now really what it's designed to do in terms of propelling you forward. So there's more forward momentum than there is um, kind of up and down. 
Um, but no, great shoe. Uh, haven't had a chance to use it enough yet to kind of test its kind of overall durability. But I know there's a lot of people out there and there's some people from our, our running club in particular that have um, maybe onto several pairs now that they've bought. So, um, <laughs> but no, keen to, to certainly do a proper race um, in this shoe when they actually do um, come back again. Um, so yeah, I will be certainly trying this out, be it a, a, a 10K, a half, um, potentially a full marathon, as long as things don't uh, continue to be postponed. But um, no, it's not done a huge amount of mileage yet. Um, but no, great shoe. I've done a couple of little tempo runs in it, just literally purely just to, to kind of test it out. But um, yeah, so this currently as it stands, sits in my top five and um, not necessarily number one. I've done mine in date order as such, but uh, yeah, up there um, to rival some of the um, some of the other carbon plated shoes. And yeah, check it out. I love this. So that's the Carbon Pocket Carbon X. Here we go. Right, number one. Um, I don't think this is going to be a surprise to many people. Um, you can probably guess what this shoe is. Um, I think probably more my number one shoe because of the uh, memories it's created uh, and kind of than just the fact it's a, uh, you know, a very talked about shoe at the moment, shall we say. So I think that probably gives it away. Um, so for me, yeah, it's, without further ado, my number one shoe is the next percent. So um, for those of you who know me quite well, no, I do have another pair of these in the newer colorway, um, but actually because I've not raced in those yet, they're still pretty fresh out of the box. I've only worn them. Um, actually, no, do you know what? I take that. I, I take it back. I have raced in them. So do you know what? They're gone. Wait there. What am I talking about? Shoe cupboard. We're switching colours. This is my number one shoe, not that one, because I have raced in this. I'm going mad. I raced Chichester 10K in this uh, about two months ago. Um, I, oh, I don't know though. Do you know what? Can I have two? Because well, it's the same shoe, it's different colour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, same shoe, different colour. So it's the next percent. Uh, just because I ran Chicago in these, that's probably my number one race. And we will be doing a video later this week that talks about um, our favourite races as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, so I, I kind of wore these yeah, in Chicago last year. Um, brilliant shoe, a massive improvement on the previous version on the um, I forgot what they're called now. The Vaporfly, what were they? 4%, 4%. percent. That's it. Yeah, four percent. So these are probably five percent, I guess. Um, but yeah, actually very comfortable. You can get away with long training runs in these. Um, I certainly wouldn't wear them every time you go out, but um, they've improved a lot of stuff on it. Uh, very, very fast. I mean, there's a reason why you see ninety percent of uh, elite runners wearing these on the start line. Um, certainly in terms of durability. So to give you an idea, mine's done about three hundred miles, and yeah, they're not. They're not bad, um, they're better than some people's I've seen, um, but they're certainly not going to be a thousand mile shoe. But just for the memories alone, um, this is uh, my number one shoe. So there you have it. Um, there are our kind of top 10 shoes, if you like. Um, again, if you like our content, please do subscribe to our channel um, and click the little bell icon on the bottom right hand side. That will just notify you if we upload any more videos. Um, if there's any content you want to see, let Daryl or I know. Um, we're more than happy to do pretty much any videos. We're hoping once we're allowed at a lockdown, we're going to do a few more kind of fun uh, challenges out on the roads. Uh, and uh, yeah, send us your ideas. Uh, do like our posts, subscribe, do whatever you need to. But um, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah. Let us know what, what you think. think. Yeah, yeah. If you've got any questions on any of the shoes that we've just talked about, fire them our way. Cheers, guys. Have a good day. Cheers. See you later. Bye.